And, oh, you can see here we go. Here we go. Let's take a look at the scoreboard here. Actually, let's take a look at the rosters if we can uh, for just a brief moment uh, because I want you guys to know where all the teams are sitting on. Of course, we have the German Empire facing off against the United Kingdom. Uh, so we'll take a look at the scoreboard in a little bit. But in the meantime, though, let's talk about this gameplay. And, and here also, by the way, is the spectator mode. Uh, what you guys are used to if you have played Battlefield 4, if you played Battlefield Hardline, um, and of course our great guys in the back getting all the awesome camera shots. Yeah, they're making sure that we're seeing the best of the action today, and that's a really important part for everyone out there watching, is that you get to see some proper gameplay now. Like you were saying, we've seen the trailers, but it's now time to see something, you know, fully fledged, in the flesh, Battlefield 1. And here we go, folks. So we have some uh, tank gameplay here. And uh, X-Factor working with his teammates. This is the Mark IV tank, I believe. He's blowing up the map, making sure he knows what's going on. There we go. Smash through the wall. It's, yeah. not, like, it's not like it's even there. Yeah, no, the tank is, the tank is absolutely brutal. Um, so now X-Factor is going to be inside of the tank working with uh, uh, Mitz here to clear this spot. And now moving over to, I believe this is going to be Stone Mountain's POV. Yeah, I believe so. Oh, he's got... Uh, one of the uh, the classic weapons out there, using the sniper rifle, one of my uh, one of my favourite weapons to use on the battlefield. Okay, so now uh, just to kind of give everyone an update as to what it is that we're going to be playing, it will be conquest. What you know, what you love from Battlefield. Uh, six points up for grabs for those of you who may be new to the franchise. Look at that tank. Look at it. It's just that incredible. Look. That is one of the, the, uh, the heavy tanks that you're going to be seeing in play as well. Good shot, so trying to lay down Ooh. with that pistol. Is he going to take him? Grenade going out. Ooh. You can see the bolt action shots too. And also some of the variants that you, you're going to see a unique. Oh, Ooh. get some right in front, but that's going to be an assist. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Something that you're going to see today is all the different uh, weapons that are going to be available. And, uh, well, there are quite a lot of them we're going to get through today. And loads of different perspectives. So you'll get an all round feel for Battlefield 1 in the Conquest game mode. Yeah, this is looking insane right this, now. <laughs> this cinematic shot. Look at all the players running around. It's fantastic. Good stuff indeed. So, continuing to move forward, trying to go for that cheeky nose scope, not going to find that one. Uh, but progress continuing on forward. Blue team currently, if I'm reading that screen correctly, has uh, two points, working on A and E as well. They're leading 26 to 19 as well, which means uh, they've got the upper hand so far. German Empire versus the United Kingdom. Look, oh, oh, look airplane at that. battle. Now, when I did the Battlefield 4 showdown, one of my favorite things to capture were the airplane battles, right? And here we are yet again with the biplanes. It's something that I don't think... Oh, 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 oh got nearly. Up there. That would have been bad, man. That would have been bad. That, that, would, that would not have been good. And you can see, actually, that... Oh, no, 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 don't go to oh. the ground. Okay, okay, well, he's... He's out of there. Just taking a quick pit stop, that's all. Yeah, you know, just, just <laughs> look at the scenery, though. An emergency it's, landing. Everything going on around you. There's, tank, there's uh, tanks on the ground, all the airplanes up in the sky. Now we have uh, 24 to 36. And Monastery currently being capped here. Let's Using see one what X-Factor uh, can do. Working with uh, Major Nelson as well, and uh, Rich Sherman as well as uh, one cheesy... Opo, great name. Using the SMG. Oh, wait. Pulling up one of the mounted weapons. Yeah. The, the, the mounted weapons here, of course, if you're, you know, holding off on this flank here, you have to be very mindful, too, because tanks can come in and just shred that wall. Yeah. Oh, right? If you think you're going to be able to maintain position there for a long time, as soon as they get wind that you're holding that spot, they can send a tank there and just absolutely destroy. And a couple things to note about the tank classes as well. It is an actual class yep. that you select, and then you go into the game with the tank Still class that has its own gun, its own tools, yep. all these different items. Uh, you can pick up a tank from the battlefield, as you would in other battlefields, but now with the tank class system, it is a it is a class designated to vehicle drivers. Correct. So, uh, if you want to spawn in and make sure you are that tank driver, when you pop out of it, if you ever have to leave it for any reason, you will have your own loadout, which is uh, something a little bit different that we haven't seen before. Keep in mind, too, the red team has the lead here, and they have managed to get out of this one. Look at Jamie Foxx. <laughs> he's, he's really getting into it, isn't he? Yeah, he's going in. <laughs> <laughs> he's singing to the camera. He's, I, I, honestly, I, I'm sweating right now. This, that was it's just, the emotion. It's I mean, the emotion. Look at it. You saw his <laughs> eyes. You saw the, the, the love in his eyes. You know, the love and the pain. Oh, man, goodness. Uh, so <laughs> we got a lot of action going on, though, inside of the monastery here. 
Look and it's already fully destroyed. Yeah, it, it was fantastic. The it, uh, the scenery that's, uh, that's on offer. Oh, taken out. Nice taken stuff. out. Nice stuff. Uh, so Celatrix going to get that kill uh, or that drop there. Let's see what we have as uh, we potentially switch perspectives. And you saw right there, as a matter of fact, too, that was the way a, that you uh, the way that you spawn in. Yeah, I, I was hoping that we could have actually caught that view for a brief moment because it is so cool how you spawn into the game. So in previous Battlefield titles, you had a 2D map that just showed you where everything was going on in the Battlefield, right? Yep, correct. This time around, though, that map that was once 2D, that is the actual game itself. Like, the, the match that is taking place, all the players moving, you can see the explosions happening throughout yep. the battlefield. It's all there. And then when you spawn in, oh. you actually swoop into it. Good stop there. And uh, again, trying to see who he's going to be. Doom 49. Yeah. So it's will be Doom 49. Oh, can he take him? Oh, he got the assist, he got the assist. I mean, you were going back, let's go back to the spawn screen. It, it gives you a feeling like where you're zooming in, you're a lot more aware of what's yep. going on around you because you can see the explosion, you can see that player moving. If an enemy spotted up, then it gives you the chance to maybe switch where you might want to spawn so you don't die as soon as you, uh, as soon as you jump in. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, actually, it's a really just cool looking moment too when you just swoop into that site, but... Here we go. Over to uh, Matt's perspective here, as he's just going to going in with the SMG. Nice close quarters weapon. That's right. Good Using it to full there. effect. Multiple variants as well for that one. Uh, that players are going to have the option to use here in this particular build. And I think that was an anti-tank grenade that he just picked up there. And check out Snoop Dogg. He's he's waiting to see if anyone's going to charge up on this trench here, trying to work with his teammates. Well, you can see the concentration. Look at all these players. They're all just looking out, going, right, well, I've got to really concentrate here. I've got to make sure that I'm in. Look, you can see Stone Mountain there just behind. He's making sure that, yep, see, he's telling his players what to do. Getting the troops to fall in line, <laughs> man. Getting the troops. And here we go. So this is the spawn system. You just swoop right into it, and you go right into the vehicle, like, or wherever you decide to go. Was, it is so cool. That was just awesome to see. I mean, that kind of mechanic. I mean, the spawn screen is one of the most valuable things you can look at because you can really help change the way the battle's moving. Stuff. And if you can see all that information, in front of you is so much more helpful. And there are a variety of, uh, you know, items that you could use as well, gadgets that you, you'll see players use. I think we saw the uh, anti-vehicle grenade just a little while ago. Back over to the uh, spawn again. and, and Moving uh, in with Major Nelson here. Yep, Major Nelson. Let's see what he can do. Lean the troops. Actually, nice. I believe this is rival X. I think this is X Factor. Oh, you think it's X Factor? Uh, no offense to Larry. Love Larry to death. <laughs> Good friend of mine. I just haven't seen Larry move like this in, in quite a while, so I, I don't know if that's Major Nelson. But in here comes, comes the airship, Westy. This is the special bit. So what you've got is an extremely powerful piece of weaponry right here. Um, is it the, uh, the British Army have got this one right now? Yeah, so because of that, the way it works essentially is that it, it, you want to look at it as when the team is down, it's that last-ditch opportunity, that yeah. last effort to be able to get back into the game. And the airship, if used properly, can cause a lot of damage. It is a, yeah. an incredible, incredible piece of, we of weaponry. A behemoth, if yeah. you will. I mean, obviously, though, it's a huge target. As we can see, it's getting shot already. So it's, uh, it's not something that you're likely to miss in the sky, but all that power right there. If you were down and you needed to take a couple of flags back in Conquest, this could give you the power to do that. You can absolutely obliterate people with the guns that are on it. Infantry don't stand a chance, so it really is the last ditch, but you could turn things oh, around. The plane just <laughs> landed right in front of us, and it, oh, good shot there, and uh, look at Terry Crews throwing down on the PC. That's what's up, man. You know, just, just looking for that opportunity. I think he found someone in front of him and just, oh, now he's just yelling. Yeah, well, I mean, again, it's the emotion, <laughs> raw emotion on board with Snoop Dogg. He's in one of the tanks, I think, or is it the armored car? I think it might be the tank. Yeah, I think that is the tank there. And yep. uh, over here, Stone Mountain's Ooh. POV dealing with a lot of pressure, and Sea Nanners coming out of nowhere, giving them the business. That's I think unfortunate. One thing we did see there was one of the uh, the new movement mechanics, the way that you can pull yourself yes. up on top. You might have just seen it before the guy uh, before the guy hit the floor. Uh, you can now pull yourself up for, onto cover that's a lot higher than you, so you can uh, use the cover to your advantage, or you can drop down behind it, but then you can spring out in surprise as well. So 
there are different kinds of movement uh, mechanics in the game that are new. As you had mentioned before, the high vault, as it's called. Yep. You know, in other Battlefield games, there may have been like a gate or like, you know, stone fencing or something like that that you couldn't quite get over. Now you can. It's just all one fluid motion. Look at the tank just running through everyone here. I don't even know who's in that tank, but he is looking to cause some damage. Hey. And, and here's a couple of interesting notes about the tank, too. So you can actually target damage tanks this time around, right? Correct. So if I want to eliminate the treads, I can eliminate the treads. I can do the best I can to... Whoa, okay. That was interesting. <laughs> but yeah, like That's you say, guys. the damage is individual to certain parts, but it's not not just these tanks that we've got here, there are different types of tanks in Battlefield 1. So you've got light tanks, medium tanks, and heavy tanks. Obviously the name will tell you a little bit about what they do, but a light tank can only hold one player, so you could be very effective on your own. But if you want to sit down with some of your squad mates, you can move into a medium tank, that's got three seats in it. And if you really want to take your full squad in a, in a tank and you want to go bowling around the battlefield and just uh, causing absolute havoc, then you can use one of the heavy tanks that's got five seats in it. Yeah, and, and another thing to note as well about, you know, just the, the tanks in general, they are tied to those specific classes, right? Uh, they contain a variety of weapons uh, depending on the situation, but most importantly though, they contain a repair hammer, right, which you can use to actually give yourself that, you know, yep to keep you alive and keep the keep the tank going. Uh, also, another thing to note, too, and I do want to talk about this, you can actually self-repair your tank. Yes, you can. You, so you can stay in the tank, but th there's a trade-off, right? Like all things, there's a trade-off. You actually cannot get out of, uh, of the tank. You can't move, you can't fire, you can't do anything. You're kind of a sitting duck. So while you can't repair, you can't do a lot of things. And, and oh. by the way, he just... He's parachuting out. Oh, this is it. This is what we're waiting for. Just raining, just raining destruction on his opponent here. Finds one in front of him. He's just going to land on this building. Here we go. Is oh, he going to make boy. it? Nice. Good yeah, stuff there. Takes him down. Takes him down. No, but that's one thing about the airship. If you do spawn in, you happen to be in one of the in the weapons, you want to get back into the action. Maybe you want to get a little bit closer to the enemy. You think you can do some damage. Well, you can just jump out, parachute down, and get straight back into the battle. And another thing, you see that bayonet there, right? The bayonet, if you're sprinting and then you hit a specific button, you can actually go a little bit faster. Not only is it a good escape mechanic, potentially, if you're in a bit of a sticky situation, but if you just charge right into someone, you're going to take them out. Here we go, folks. The airship has been destroyed, and it is going to drop another incredible factoid about this airship, guys. It doesn't matter where it... Like, there's no, like pre-programmed like this is where this is going to fall no it falls anywhere all those buildings down there are going to be this. destroyed just watch this oh it's my incredible. goodness this is crazy no why would you go there <laughs> <laughs> that is and insane not just that but once it's hit the ground its carcass stays there as well so you have to battle it out moving through all of this like metal that's just crashed into the ground it's, uh, it's a ruin at that point. Obviously, we saw incredible. a little bit of first person, a little bit of third person there. But the first time I saw that when I got to play this game, everybody just stood still and watched it. It was absolutely incredible to watch. Awesome stuff. And there you can see the remnants of what was there past the airship. <laughs> it looks fantastic, doesn't it? <laughs> it, it, it? And it also just creates a whole new, you know, gameplay element too, yeah. right? Because now you got to bob and weave through this metal. Yeah, I mean, like you could have like taken cover behind some of those buildings. That's not gonna. That's not gonna be the case anymore. Plus, let's say that it does land on all those buildings. You've got that close quarters environment. Well, now you get to see players that are a little bit further away, so it changes up the game a little bit. That's a scout. Here we go. With X Factor Gaming. Nice view of the town here. Actually, this is a, this is a nice shot. So you can see all of these buildings here. I believe. Uh, can be destroyed. And there's Captain Sparkles in the tank there, getting a little reckless. Finds one in front of him there. That's going to be a good pickup. Looking for a second kill. Well, he's going to get the second pick. Good job indeed from X Factor Gaming. He every time we've gone on a perspective with him, he has been a beast, just I, doing doing the dirty work, man. I expect nothing less from uh, from X Factor. It, if you've ever played with him or you've ever had the opportunity to see him play, he is just uh, an extremely good battlefield player. Oh, but just as we say that, oh well, it's, it's, it's the curse fault. of the commentator, isn't it? <laughs> it's, your, it's your fault. And there you have it, folks. Congratulations. That it was awesome.
I, uh, if I'm correct, I believe that was the German Empire who yeah, came I out on top of that victory. Well, because obviously the uh, the British got the uh, got the airship, but uh, perhaps they couldn't quite use it to full effect. So the German Empire takes the first round, and that is going to be uh, Stone Mountain's uh, crew, if I'm correct. So. so awesome stuff. We're going to go into game two in just a little bit. Uh, so we'll get that one kicked off as soon as possible. But keep in mind, this is the best of three. Yeah, it definitely is. Anybody could win at this point. That's right. So will Team Neebs fight back? Will they get that victory? I'd like to think so. I mean, who'd want to see like the, the final game? It's just uh, it's a face-off between the two teams. That would be cool to see. And the, the airship really did not help out the you know the UK the the United Kingdom team all that much it, it was effective but as soon as that thing came crumbling down that's it you've lost it yeah they've held they they held full control of that it was overall pretty solid performance though from the German Empire squad Team Stone Mountain 64 yep. they claim game number one so it turns out all that trash talk on the internet man well, yeah, maybe they were just, just hiding the fact they knew they could win they knew they could maybe, win that maybe, maybe. <laughs> you know just uh, turtling you know not not letting people know keeping keeping the uh, you know the tactics secret for the time <laughs> being. Anyway, well, we're going to get ready for game two here, which will be starting up. I believe it's already up, so we're going to dive into this one. And another thing to note as well, we, we mentioned at the top of the show, we, we talked about the dynamic weather elements, right? And funny enough, you know, in this particular map that we're checking out, which is a St. Quentin Scar, uh, you can start up with a beautiful sunny day, like now, just like now, <laughs> right? Or you could start off with a cloudy day. But it could be raining. Or it could be raining. And guess what? It can also happen mid-game, too. It's awesome, isn't it? It's, so, it's pretty sick. When you, like, I hope it rains at some point because I want you guys to see the effects of like, each raindrop landing on the, uh, just landing on the gun. It's, yep. it's incredible, man. It is incredible. Well, I mean, you can see the environment here. So right now on a sunny day, you can see pretty much everything that's yeah. going on. But you can imagine what's going to happen when it starts to rain. You can't see things that are a little bit too far away. So maybe you with that sniper rifle trying to take people out like 100 yards, 200 yards away, that might not be able to happen anymore. Unless you're a skilled player, then maybe, maybe you're just godly with a sniper rifle. But look at this player here. <laughs> Only in battle. Well, he was just getting. Is he, is he done? I, I, he, I think he probably. It looked got. like he was getting rocked just a little oh, bit. Look, vehicle disabled. You oh, take him down. Wow. Vehicle destroyed. What a use there. That was fantastic. That was some great shots there, and that was the uh, the, the field gun. And that thing is just brutal. And another gun that I actually haven't had a chance to even try out for myself too. Be really so one of the LMGs. Too. Yeah, this is uh, one of the LMGs. Look at that side-loading magazine there. That's uh, a little bit different. This is one of the things about weaponry back then. I mean, each army had their own way of doing things, and, you know, there wasn't one set way. So, like, you can see it in the tanks. You can see the German tank is very different to the British tank, and that's exactly the same with the weaponry. I mean, they may have thought this might be a good idea. Other, other armies didn't think so. Yeah, what's really cool is that it's a balance of you know the, uh, the testing of, of what we saw in World War One, the weaponry yep. that we saw being tested we in that time period, as well as what was actually used, you know? Correct. So there's a lot of cool different kind of gameplay elements there, all in the interest, most importantly, of, of fun gameplay, right? Which yep. this game certainly is. And uh, look at that stare. The, the death stare right into the He's camera. He's on winning with Team Neeps this time. Team Neeps. Team Neeps. Team Neeps. <laughs> all right. Well, let's see. Hopefully they could uh, pull out the W here. Well, obviously we've seen a lot of weapons here so far. We've seen gadgets and things, but maybe people don't know all the weapons that are on offer. So, first of all, you've got semi-automatic rifles. You've also got SMGs, LMGs, shotguns, sniper rifles, and you've got some pistols in there as well. So there's a, a full set of weaponry, just like you'd expect from a Battlefield game. Yeah, we were talking about it before just a little bit. Uh, you know, the gadgets, you're going to see anti-vehicle grenades for the assault, trip mines for the support, as well as ammo bags for the support. Correct. You're also going to see the medic bag and the revived syringe, which you may have caught a couple times in some of the videos for the medic position. And then you have the signal flare, which spots enemies for the sniper. That's quite, quite exciting stuff. And then the rocket gun for the assault. Now, we, we haven't we seen have rocket gun be used angle. just yet, but essentially what it is, it's, it's, a, it's exactly as it sounds. Yeah, it, it really is. It's <laughs> a rocket gun, but in order for you to fire it, you have to go prone. Or you can set it up behind cover, and then you can use it as a resting point, and then you fire it. 
Uh, it really does have some extreme power behind it as well. So if you can use it effectively, you've got the opportunity to do some serious damage. And then the last thing I want to talk about are the anti-vehicle rounds yes. from the sniper. And I actually had a chance to use these earlier when we were setting up uh, setting up the, uh, the gameplay arena. And... Um, well, you can, as it says, you can do damage to vehicles with your uh, with your sniper rifle, but you have to sacrifice your your weapon really because you change and you move from firing normal rounds into using something that is purely designed to take down vehicles. Now, obviously, it's nowhere near effect near as effective as like the anti tank grenade, but you've still got the opportunity as a scout class to. Ball, just uh, just uh, honing in on a, a gunfight there, but you have the opportunity to maybe help your team take down a vehicle. You could take it down if it had a little health left, but you still feel like you've actually got a chance in that fight between you, just one infantry player and a massive tank. And I have to say, man, X-Factor has been so impressive. He's been uh, a one-man army going for the tanks, going for the close-range gameplay, uh, even playing some range. And just look at the way that he is absolutely lighting up the other team. They are approaching him from all angles, and he is holding it down. I believe this is his teammate as well. No, 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 I, no was that was not. not. <laughs> was evidenced by that there. So that was 249 coming in hot with that pick. Good stuff by, uh, by Doom there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, look at all the concentration here. All of it going straight into the game. Every yeah. one of them intent on getting the uh, getting the points that they want, trying to capture those objectives. Yeah, and also I just want to uh, highlight something too. So you guys may have noticed that you, you see a couple doors, uh, you know, oh, scattered yes. about. Um, and here's the good news. There's this really cool and a good revive there. Nice, Fantastic. nice good to work, see. That was uh, going to be Matt there with that with that revive. So I just want to note. One of the coolest things that uh, that they added in Battlefield 1 is the charge through a door. That's so you close the door, you think to yourself, man, I have, a, I have, I have security. I feel good, Westy. I'm protected. <laughs> no, you are not protected, my friend, because I can charge right through that door and say, here's Johnny. It's awesome. <laughs> I love it. You don't have to stop at the door anymore, which is actually a limitation of some of the older games where you had to wait. You had to wait for the pop up to come up, and then you could open the door again. You could, of course, blow the door off and then not have that right. option. But now you've got literally just charge straight through it, full speed. You don't have to slow down, and the enemy doesn't have that chance to get away anymore. Great, great shots there. Oh, uh, a little bit of a bombing run. Oh, nice. Not bad, not bad. And, and, and again, you know, they have so many great players here uh, from guys who come from the Battlefield community, popular content creators, and of course, our celebrities that are here playing today. So you're seeing just a diverse mix of skill here. But what's, what's really cool and always impresses me is air gameplay, man. Because yeah. I can't control a plane to save my life. It is like... <laughs> The saddest thing, you, someone watched my stream, I remember one time I hopped into a jet, and then the jet blew up the second I got inside of the jet. I didn't even know what I did. I have no idea. I did, I did it. I said I committed, you know, like I, I <laughs> took myself up. Wesley, please. Uh, I don't know what to do here, man. Well, looking at this, I mean, we were looking actually at a semi-automatic rifle there. And you have to load every single bullet. So, you know, you've got to be really careful if an enemy's sort of hanging around. Maybe you don't want to fully load all of those bullets. And so maybe you want to switch to your sidearm. Might be a little bit more helpful in that situation. Yeah, and the sidearms too, they have a lot of kick to them oh, as yeah, well. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, in, in previous battlefields, I, I would be able to whip up a sidearm and, and get some reasonable shots at a distance. Um, this time around, though, not not the same thing. It, 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 that gun has a lot of kick to it, as do a lot of the weapons in yep. this game. You know, they have a lot of kick. Uh, you know, they, a lot of different you know, bullet drop as well as yep. drag. There's there's just a lot of different uh, uh, gameplay mechanics that you know at play here. And also, you had mentioned before, or you you, you alluded to it, Wes. You pointed to me the airship has arrived. Yeah, it's coming back in again, so we might get a shot of that in a minute. And actually, what we should do is maybe just go into a little bit more about the uh, the airship and maybe see if we can uh, show some of the power that it possesses, because it was good to see like people firing off some of those shots, showing what damage it does on the ground. Uh, be interesting to see. Feels bad, man. No, he's <laughs> typing it. Here it comes. Bad, Here it comes. Oh, that's great. And uh, one thing that I think we will mention about this airship is that it is uh, fully controllable by the player. Now, in the past, you might have noticed some of the bigger objects in the Battlefield games, uh, but this one is fully controllable by the player. So all that power, you can wow. take it wherever you like. But obviously, it's a huge object in the sky. It's not like it can turn around in a couple of seconds. So 
if you want to go somewhere, you better pick that out in your head just as you start using it and then head for it. Don't change your mind because it takes a long time for it to move around. And you could obviously get taken down by that point and not be as effective. Also, I want to note too, you saw when he picked up the, uh, you know, you picked up that, that mounted uh, machine gun there. Yeah. Visibility, right? A lot of these weapons, you know, even when you talk about the airship, right, and like what it's able to do, what it's not able to do, mm -hmm. it's still a behemoth, right? But, you know, at that time, right, visibility was very limited. Oh, know, yeah. It was all about protecting yourself. Uh, so you'd see, like, shielding, like, all over the place. Yeah. Um, even, like, some of the uh, armor that you would see back then, because they actually wore full armor mm. in World War I. Yeah. Um, it was just, it was insane, yeah, right? And especially with the weaponry that was at play at the time. But it was, like, just a concept of running around with just full-blown armor. And even for those mountain machine guns, you, you see the, you know, just the visibility, the lack of visibility that you have. It's a trade-off for such a powerful weapon. We Correct. I mean, that's something that you will know all the way through Battlefield 1. I mean, even looking at it here, you can see this tank's just pushing its way on through, but there are certain areas where you're like, right, well, I've got to try and get this tank out of a tiny little gap that I've got myself stuck in. It can't turn very quickly. It can't move very quickly. So you really need to be ready for the situation. You've got to learn how things really work. Like the semi-automatic rifles, for example. Once you fired all those shots, you've got to individually reload, where an SMG might be better because you just pull out the magazine and pop another one in, away you go. So there's all these different, like, sort of intricate little things here that will come into play and uh, I think that because it's still the Battlefield game that you know but it's just a little bit different and it's a little bit I think it feels better it's it's guys I'm not even kidding this game is like look at this nuts. You see the top mounted magazine they're getting right in the way like what you were saying it's like people thought that was the best way to do things we'll get it top loaded so it's easier to to fit a new magazine in oh well but it's right in the middle of my face so you know it's just one of those things yeah, now, of course, uh, we have uh, just an update to the score there. It seems like the German Empire is doing a really good job uh, continuing to rack up points. We have just under, uh, I believe, like three minutes or four minutes for this game before it concludes. And a great, great run here with the plane. Does a substantial amount of damage there uh, coming back in for another run. And there's a lot of things that we can cover about this game. Uh, you've even seen it here, actually, if the, when, when uh, X-Factor was, was looking at it. You can see that the when, wherever there's, there's an explosion, right? Oh, oh we goodness. got taken down. That's unfortunate. Big Star just ran him over. <laughs> so one thing to note, when in a, a tank, you know, explodes, right? When you shoot a, you know, a shell into the ground, that ground now actually uh, changes shape, right? It, it it's fully uh, deforming. Like you can you can just lower the ground a little bit to give yourself just a tad bit more cover. And now we're starting to see the rain come into play. So it started off as a beautiful sunny day in St. Quentin Scar, and now it's raining. Oh, but rain is beautiful in this game. <laughs> well, I mean, like we were saying, this changes visibility. And uh, for people like pilots in the sky, even, like, you know, you're having to drive through rain now. Maybe you haven't quite got the visibility on that other plane that you were looking to try and take down. Perhaps you need to change up your tactics, try and take people down on the ground instead. Here comes the rain, folks, and look, look at, at that, that sight. It's absolutely beautiful. I mean, look at all the background uh, imagery as well. Look how far you can see. You can really see, like, the battle beyond what you're playing is going on in there as well. That's actually pretty cool. That was a good shot. Way to go, production team. Good job. Good job. Uh, the, uh, the airship doesn't appear to have been damaged all that much. And again, it's the British Army that have got it. So oh, they, uh, no, they're, they're doing quite a bit of damage. As a matter of fact, you see those, those gondolas there, right? They actually uh, host mounted machine guns. Yeah. You can shoot down those uh, gondolas individually. Yeah. They will come crashing down on the ground. So there's just like carnage everywhere. Level, level cap, though. Got shut down. If you've got an extreme, well, if you think you've got good aim and you want to take the sniper rifle, it is actually possible to kill the people sitting in those gondolas without taking it down. You can take them out from the air or on the airship. Oh, look how much damage is being done uh, now. Oh, it looks like it's about to go. Oh, yeah. Or is it just the front? Is it coming down? It's coming down. I think this, it's coming down again. This is certainly not looking good for the airship. This was a UK airship here, and just the damage being done all the way in the distance. Look at that. That there, folks. All the way out there. This guy, he's nowhere. He's no mountain, nowhere near it. But it doesn't matter. Look at that. It's just crashing <laughs> it's gone completely in. down. Oh, man. But it comes come down in a different position. It didn't come down there in the last game. The farmland, man. Yeah. Think about the farm. 
You've got a little bit jutting into some, like, the town area here, so you can see it's done some damage to the buildings, but it fell in a very different position, so yeah. it may not change that location as much as it did before. Yeah, before it was, like, smack dab in the middle, right? I mean, you know, that was a, it was actually a very well-placed one, considering I think uh, the production team got a good shot with that one. Oh, yeah, it was, it was great. Oh, yeah. this guy's just biding his time because there's an enemy tank out here. And so, and his, uh, oh, he has the tank grenade. Yeah. Oh, he threw uh, it. Oh, he I might have cancelled it. Yeah, he had to cancel Something that, that you will notice, look at the weapons here. They, because it's raining, you've actually got water falling on the weapon. You can see it there on the magazine quite clearly, that it rests on the weapon. So, all the visuals are changing as, yeah. as the weather changes. So, not only can you not see as far, but the weapon that you're looking at, it actually has got rain all over it, just like you would expect if it was raining and you were outside. Oh, gets the tracks. Oh, oh. nice <laughs> job there. Uh, trying to get a pick here. Wiz Khalifa, though, is uh, going to fall down, and that was going to be Gavin who picks up this stop. Look at that intense face right there. You know, so intense. And here <laughs> oh. comes another bombing run in, in perspective from the plane first. But that looks fantastic, doesn't it? Look, you can see all the movement in front there by the propellers. That's absolutely incredible. That night. Oh, 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 no! He hit the tree! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's quite got the power to get going again. No, he, no, doesn't. he didn't. He didn't. And it's just blown up, and there you there go. Go. have it, folks. The German Empire reigns supreme once again. Snoop Dogg raising his hand in victory. <laughs> Congratulations to them. Well, that's, uh, is that 2 0 now? That's 2 0. But here's the thing, guys. We know that you want to watch Battlefield gameplay. We know that you want to see some of your favorite content creators, some of your favorite celebrities duking it out. So you know what? Well, Got to run it back. Yeah, I think we can let them do that. One more game. <laughs> Why not? Right? I was told we we're going to do three games. I'm here for three games. We might as well just get it done. Yeah, we may as well. Look at all the teams just getting ready for their third round now. It's, uh, it's interesting to see because, like I said, it's like a sharp pit in here. All these amazing players all in one room playing yep. Battlefield 1 together. So you're seeing, like the most elite players playing. And it's interesting to see because sometimes you might be playing at home and it might be very different to what you're seeing today, but you're definitely getting to see everything that you possibly could about Battlefield 1. Yeah, and for those of you guys who are here at EA Play, you're going to be able to play this game. It is awesome. I'm telling you, like, when you pick up, you know, or when you pick up the controller or you pick up a keyboard or mouse, or, of course, you can't really pick it up. When you put your hands <laughs> on the keyboard or mouse, you pick up a controller, you get what I'm saying. Anyway, when you do that, you're going to feel it right away. It, it just, the experience is certainly there. Um, the weaponry, too, it's, it's, it's really diverse, which is super fun. Yeah. Right? I and mean, each class, you can definitely say it feels different to play with those weapons. Like, you've got the SMGs, you've got the semi-automatic uh, semi rifles, you've got the LMGs, you've got sniper rifles. So there's lots of different types of weapons available in there. They're very distinct, so each class definitely has its own role. All right, can the United Kingdom come out on top here is the question. We're going to go into our final game of the show or four Battlefield squads. Of course, guys, just an FYI, we have a lot of cool stuff coming up after this as well. Uh, we have uh, post post show coverage, so we're going to you know talk to the Titanfall crew. We're going to talk to the FIFA and Madden crews as well. Uh, we have a lot of fun surprises there, so make sure you guys tune in for that. That's going to be taking place after Battlefield squads. But in the meantime, though, our final game here, Wesley, can the United Kingdom squad come out on top? I'm, I think it might be a clean sweep for the Germans. Uh, and, you know, it's just because they've got the advantage. In their heads, they're thinking, yeah, we're already 2-0 up. I think we can win this one. But, you know, you know, the plucky Brit may come around and they might win around. You never know. Keep in mind, Team Stone Mountain versus Team Neebs. Yeah. Team Stone Mountain looking fantastic. Neebs just needs to, you know, they need to pull it out of the bag. They yeah. need to get that win on the scoreboard. Dare I say, he's got to pull a Stone Mountain, get the troops in line. Yep. Get everyone ready. You know, believe in, you know, advance to the objective. PTO, push the objective. Get the points on the board. Now it's time. I just heard someone just yell. I thought, was that in the game or was that here? No, I'm almost certain that was someone in the crowd. I think it was AC Bongos actually yelled out loud. He has a very bellowing yell, you know. Just sound like real Very commanding like. voice. Yeah, <laughs> real 300-ish. Uh, here we go, folks. Into the gameplay. We're going to see some rifle gameplay now. So just look at the scope. Look how beautiful the weapon looks. It's one of those things I like to play with a sniper rifle quite a lot. It's a real, like, it's a, it's a role where, like, if you get the kill, you feel like you really deserve it. And now when you look at those weapons, you think, 
Wow, that's absolutely beautiful. Oh, the detail. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Talking about detail, look at that explosion. And you see right there the, yep. the ground deformation that happened when that tank blew up. It, it sent, you know, obviously just shaped the ground underneath. Oh, oh no, Bayonet no, charge. no, oh, no! Got him, got him. Oh, Jesse <laughs> Wellens, you poor thing. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That was really cool to see, though. But that was so entertaining. But you, what we were talking about is that the bayonet charge is like more than a sprint. You're like you're going into a mad rage. Like you, you're going to take this player down. And uh, right there, I think that's the first. Oh, 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 are we going for another one? No, oh, never mind. Oh, I didn't quite get there. Nah. Oh. Jump. Well, then you can see, you can see, right? It's a trade-off, isn't it? If you're yeah. going to push yourself, if you're going to go for that bayonet charge, you can't do anything else once you've committed. So there's yeah. a chance you could get taken out. I mean, he, ran, he runs up to the window. He tries to kill the guy. The guy gets away. And, uh, well, then, obviously, you need to uh, pay the price. Objective. Yeah, no matter, like, what terrain, you know, like, if you hit a wall, right, essentially, is what I'm trying to get. If you hit a wall, you're, you're stopped. Right mm -hmm. your tracks. There's nothing you can do. Um, you slow down. You can't sprint again. You can't do anything. Um, I, I believe you can still uh, shoot your gun, though. I, I, I think, think you can still do that. You can still uh, make sure that happens to defend yourself. But any kind of mobility, though, becomes you know severely limited, which yep. of course is an issue if you're in the thick of things. If you're right in the yep. heart of the battlefield and you go in for the charge, you pay the price if you don't get that one. And obviously, if you're going for the bayonet shots, you're focusing on that player, so you might forget that you can still fire your way, maybe get yourself out of the situation, but you're going for that player, so you're intent on getting them, and sometimes you just forget those things. Yeah, very true. Uh, you know, we, we covered a lot of uh, elements in the game here, um, and, and I know that you know the community, I'm sure, has a lot of questions about what you can and cannot do. Uh, I believe some uh, weapons also have uh, different firing options as well. I, I, I believe so. I think yeah, there's like a, a couple that I played. It was one that could do single shot, one that could do um, automatic fire. So yep. uh, there, some of the weapons, you know, mechanics that you guys are familiar with in, in, in other Battlefield games, you know, are certainly there for you to be able to switch out the weaponry and uh, or switch out the style of play, right? Whether you yep. want to go for a more steady shot or uh, you know, maybe you want a little bit more ammunition, things like that. So get in the fray. Yep, get in there. These are some great oh. cinematic shots. They are really good. They show off the environment really well. And obviously, you can see this bit here looking like pristine countryside. I mean, yeah, we've got a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, destruction down here at the bottom. A little bottom. bit. That's quite a bit of destruction <laughs> in. But, you know, I mean, like, it was pristine when we started. And I, you can bet your life that it's been completely leveled by the end of the round. So, Oh, boy. Well, here's Stone Mountain trying his best here. We're in the, this is one of the actual ruined villages. This is part of the map already ruined as it goes along. And as you go to the other side, you've got the pristine countryside. So there's a nice variation on the same map, but you can always make the pristine countryside completely flat if you want to. Yeah, it's just good visual, visualization, right? You know, you know that I'm in this particular portion of the map because it, it looks, you know, untouched by, by you know, the, the unfortunate... Here's the, uh, the destruction we're talking about. People using this uh, crater here as a little bit of cover. You see they drop right down and you can, uh, you can take cover here behind the wall and then pop up if you want to, but those those explosions allow you to change the environment a little bit more. And right from above here. Also, a couple other things too. Um, there are certain structures that you can actually level completely, yep. and uh, it, it will create a crater underneath as well. So, for people who may be concerned about like you know the. the maybe a building completely flatlined and there's no cover. There's opportunity for that because of the ground deformation. Well. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like, if you think about it this way, the floorboards sort of crumble in on themselves and there's a bit of space underneath them. So if you crouch down, then there's that still that tiny bit of wall that's been left behind and you're still able to take a bit of cover there. So you might be out in the middle of nowhere with the people firing down on you, but you've got the opportunity to take some cover and maybe give yourself a little bit more of a fighting chance. Oh, he just jumped out of that airplane he bailed, so he bailed. fast. He was not having any of that. But here we go now, there's uh, Team Stone Mountain trying to push forward, but here comes a, a tank here, Ooh. and they're going to get a huge hit on that tank, and the tank goes down. Big plays there for Stone Mountain and his crew, completely decimating that war machine. Good work there from them. <laughs>
Well, I mean, like you saw the power of the anti-tank grenade there. I mean, it looks like a small object in your hand, but it, it's sure got a big explosion uh, when it goes off. And multiple ones of those are easily going to be able to take down one of those land ships. Oh, yeah, they're, they're just they're just deadly. But, you know, I think a, a lot of people always ask the questions, well, you know, how do I defend myself against tanks? So there you saw it right there. Work Definitely. with your team, which is what Battlefield's all about, and you will be able to over overcome those odds, even if you're just, uh, you know, just a, just a small infantryman. Yeah, I mean, there was a great shot there that we just uh, that we just went past that showed, like, uh, the mudlands in between this amazing sort of countryside, and we've got what's already been destroyed. So that was a really nice we shot, that one. Objective charge. Just... You can look at so many portions of the map and just yeah. be blown away each and every time. And a uh, friendly airship has been deployed for the German Empire. Oh. So the United Kingdom coming back here, Wes. You said it was going to be a sweet man. I always believe. Uh, I didn't believe. <laughs> you did not believe. <laughs> well, maybe they're being plucky. Maybe they're going to come back for the win. You know, we can't let the uh, the Germans get all three games. So maybe they've got the uh, maybe they got the knowledge. Maybe they got the power to uh, to finish the job. Oh, nice play there, picks oh. up one, but couldn't find the second pickup. That's unfortunate. As we go into free cam mode to see the lay of the land, and there is a dogfight happening over by the fields there, uh, over here. We're going to see what the current objective is for this squad. Seems like they don't have much of an objective here at this time. That's that's never good, is it? No, you, <laughs> squad it, leaders need to direct uh, yeah, you definitely. know the flow of combat. Well, that's the uh, that's part of what you were saying. I mean, the team play is really important. We saw that tank getting taken down. We're seeing the, the capturing of the flag right here. They've just taken back the townhouse. You know, that's turning the tide a little bit back towards the German Empire, who now have control of more of those conquest flags. Yeah, and with the airship coming in. in in favor of the German Empire. Could they turn it around? They could certainly turn it around here, Westy. I would be uh, very surprised if the UK squad will be able to stop this. If this airship is properly utilized, because, and just look at the shots raining yeah. down. Those are just hefty rounds there that are just causing destruction on anyone. And oh, a melee kill has just there. One thing that we have to think about with the airship is that if you've got a lot of planes in the sky, you could all work together, take that thing down as quick as possible, and stop an assault from the enemy. Because obviously they're coming from behind. And now, if you look at it, I believe the German Empire are now in the lead. And there you can see a shot of the gondolas that house those heavy machine guns. We saw just how hefty those rounds looked. Uh, certainly is something to keep in mind, is you want to focus fire on that so yep. that you can prevent anyone from, you know, causing too much of a problem here. And, uh, there is that uh, anti-tank oh, grenade. Here we go, here we go. Can he get a shot on him? That's going to be a big one. Does he get the hit? Oh, no, the tank short. pulled away. The tank pulled... Oh, although, hang on a minute. Nice. Look at the power. That's insane, isn't it? That was, that's absolutely incredible. I think he might have run out of anti-tank grenades, though, which is why he's running away. That's unfortunate. Vardok is going to get Ooh. that pick. And there goes the tank. <laughs> that was a, a nice take now. Oh, we got some sniping action here. Can he take him? Can he take him? You also, you want to you take into account the bullet drop that happens over at this. Oh, 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 goodness gracious. That was some great shots there. Or great angles with our camera. Camera shots, whatever you want to call them. That just look cool. <laughs> that did look really cool. He's definitely got somebody on his tail, though. You can see the, uh, the bullets going past. Back with the sniping. Okay. Looking for He's trying to lead the shot a little bit, which is actually the smart thing to do. You you might get the kill, but oh, we missed out on the uh, on the on the drop down there. And and the thing sniping in this game is you know it's a challenge. It it is you know it's going to take a lot of getting used to here. But here you see he he knows that this spot is currently being taken over, and I don't know if that's his teammates. I think we might no. need to. Well, it has got to try and find where the enemy player is. I mean, you can see on the mini-map, you might just be able to see that. And, ah, it's a tank. It's a tank. <laughs> he, he might have a bit of trouble taking that down with a sniper rifle. <laughs> I think he realized that, too. He was like, you know, I'm just going to go back and continue uh, sniping. I'm not going to worry about the tank. You guys deal with that. I got no time for this. All right. Oh, there you go. That's the, uh, the ground underneath the building there. So you can still use it as a little bit of cover. It's not fully destroyed yet, but there is a chance that that could happen during yeah. the game. And so. especially how Doom was entering that doorway there, you know, had it not been as frantic, potentially the person that he had eliminated uh, would have been able to use the coverage and, and get a better angle on him and, and pick him off. So, uh, uh, Pony's been left hanging. Got some high free yeah, we got the high five. We got the high five. As man. long as it happens. You know. Yeah, I know, because then it's that, it's that <laughs> moment that's, that's gift.
and it lives forever, <laughs> and he'll never be able to live it down. So uh, we have, we averted a crisis there, folks. Back High fives with the given. with the sniper. It seems like the team actually no, yet yeah, the team took back the windmill. So carry on sniping to his heart's content. I don't think he's hit a living soul. Which is I, unfortunate. You know, it's like, uh, at first, if you don't succeed, try again. Unless you're that guy, just give it a, just give it a stop. You know, just for the time being. Move closer, maybe. You know, like what what you might notice, obviously, all these all these conquest flags are relatively. They're all sort of spaced out perfectly, and. Uh, Oh, yes, actually. Let's talk about that. Yeah, so we were uh, brought up before on this, and, and I did want to talk about a different kind of weather conditions. We saw rain. We saw sun. Now we're starting to see the fog set in, and the fog can be quite brutal. Wes, you have experiences with that too, right? Yeah, I definitely have. And, I mean, obviously we were looking at a map that was giving all different types of gameplay. So you had the close quarters, you had medium range and long range for sniping. Now, Edward. if you're a sniper at the top of that windmill over there, there's not a chance in hell that you're going to be able to see what's going on down in the town. So you're going to have to come out, potentially use your pistol, or maybe even swap to another class when you respawn to try and win the battle because, well, the weather's not going to let you snipe anymore. And keep in mind, too, you know, that this is going to affect the airship. It's going to also affect any planes that are in the air. They, they won't be able to tell where the infantry are moving. They are covered essentially by Mother Nature herself. Uh, so we, now... We haven't got left, long left. We've only got a couple of... Oh! There goes Zeppelin's the coming down this time. There goes the airship. We are it's going to fall down. down, and this is not looking good. Where it's going to land is the question, and how it's going to affect the battlefield uh, is also battle. something of note here. But overall, though, you know, that stop there with the uh, from the German Empire's airship, that was huge because it could have gone out of control. The United Kingdom may have not been able to hold these points. We've got a minute and a half left of the game, and there's only about 15 points in it. So the Germans managed to pull themselves in front, but there's still a chance that the British could bring this round in the last minute of the game, especially with the air. Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> that, shark. that was brutal. <laughs> shark is brutal, man. He is not He's not anyone's friend. Well, right. if you look at it now, the uh, the British are in the lead, 145 to 128. They've turned it round. Indeed they have, but they are going to be losing point A, and it seems like they might. D is being contested here. White boy can't stand a chance against Doom as he comes around the corner. Yeah, and it looks over as to he, the yeah. townhouse. Here we go. Maybe the blue team can get this point here. This is going to be point D that was currently being contested, and they're fighting over townhouse at this moment. A lot of bodies on this we point, on this flag. They should be able to get control of it. Well, let's hope so, because if the British can do manage to pull off a win, it, it ends up 2-1. But, you know, you couldn't let go with a 3-0 landslide. You just can't let the sweep happen, man. <laughs> you know, I mean... It, it, you'd want to go out with some dignity. Definitely. You could win the third round, you know, that's consolation. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps the tactics weren't there in the first two rounds. Maybe we call them warm up. <laughs> yeah, right. That la those last two rounds didn't count. This one is the one that matters because we won. Uh, with only 14 seconds left. Uh, oh, what, what a shot. Neves that going down there. <laughs> He's so happy. That was Stone Mountain to Neves, if I'm correct. Was it? I believe that was oh. Stone Mountain to Neves. That what? is awesome. Well, maybe it's like, well, we'll let you win this one. But uh, do you know what? I'm going to take you out anyway. <laughs> and there we go. Well, there you have it, folks. Congratulations to all the competitors.